Um, so welcome. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, one of the one of the bits of, of feedback that we got from uh, the most recent parent survey was that we hadn't uh, really given a ton of ha haven't had a ton of these um, info sessions. So I figured coming back from February break uh, now would be a, a as good a time as any. Um, if you have specific questions, as always, type them in the chat. Um, we'll, we'll be happy to answer as, as much as we possibly can. Um, I have to admit that uh, running some of these sometimes gives me a little bit of, of PTSD to where we were uh, toward the end of last spring and over the summer uh, when we were trying to push out as much information as we could about uh, the state of affairs. And, um, you know, to be honest, we we uh, we've been been really trying to to do our best to stay afloat and uh, keep moving things forward, and we think we've done a a reasonable job on both fronts. There are some things that we are going to keep trying to do better uh, as the year progresses. Some of that we'll we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about this evening. Um, we have over the last couple of weeks um, asked feedback of both parents and students. Uh, I'm going to start with giving some of the some of that information that we got from both parents and students because it, it's really informing um, what we plan on doing uh, the rest of the way, and um, it's interesting because uh, there isn't always a lot of consensus. Uh, the one bit of consensus that we have at at this point is um, that there are no easy solutions. Uh, there is not a thing any of us are going to be able to do that's going to uh, please everyone. Uh, I acknowledge that. I said starting uh, probably oh, around uh, April of last year that there were no good decisions, just uh, trying to make the best bad decision we can sometimes. Um, but that being said, I feel like people have really risen to the challenge, uh, parents and kids alike. Uh, none of us got into the business to, to do school like this. But again, uh, when I hear from some of my colleagues, and I see even what my own children go through every day. Um, I'm pretty proud of, of what we've had uh, so far. Uh, but this isn't going to be all show ponies and unicorns. I'm going to, you know, share some of uh, some of our challenges and uh, what we hope to do to to close some of those gaps as we move forward. Uh, again, if you have questions or specific things that you'd like us to bring up, you can type them in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, I, I try to get back to every single question that's asked there. I know Mr. DeMeglio, he'll be keeping an eye on the chat box as well. So uh, we will do our best to either come back to them. If it's something really specific about a, an individual student or an individual class, uh, just write down that you have something really specific that you'd like to chat with us about, and we will be sure to get back to you. Um, so when we think about what parents think, um, you know, at the end of last year, one of the things that we were really uh, intent on was making sure that there was uh, a higher degree of, of accountability and making sure that uh, the schedule uh, was gonna enable our, our teachers to be able to plan in a, in a decent way. Um, we have some constraints that maybe people aren't always aware of, contractual constraints and uh, safety constraints within the building that um, for now make our, our scheduling lives difficult. Um, you know, we're only allowed to have a certain number of passing times and uh, within a certain day and and we also are, are still limited uh, by certain uh, variables like the number of feet between between students. Um, when we look at the schedule and you'll see 76 responses that's 76 responses from parents um, it's trending neutral to, to positive. There are definitely a couple of folks for whom uh, the schedule is not working. Uh, there are definitely for some students for whom the schedule doesn't work. Um, we can't do all things with our schedule, but we we try. Um, I'm feeling like, and Mr. Demeglio and I remarked about this when we came back from Christmas break. Um, probably that that stretch between early January and the week before February break, we really actually hit a, a little bit of a stride where everyone seemed to have finally figured out how, uh, how best to use class time. It's still not ideal, it's still not perfect. Um, 
and there are some students for whom truthfully um, anything that we do for a schedule is going to work. Um, but the one thing that we have adjusted to are the quick classes in the afternoon, um, the, uh, the use of, of class time uh, synchronously a lot of times uh, with kids at home and kids in the building doing similar things, uh, particularly since we've had kids that have had to be absent and uh, families that have, have had their own uh, challenges with, with the pandemic. Um, you know, some of the positives, um, you know, I think one of my, my favorite, you know, qualitative like comments somebody wrote was, I can't believe how safe you've kept the building. Um, honestly, sometimes neither can we. Uh, we. We don't really have a lot of evidence that there's any transmission here, um, that, you know, we've, we've managed things on a, on a really uh, responsive way. Um, one thing that I, I think sometimes goes unspoken is the work that most families have done when somebody's not feeling well to give us a call and say, you know, we're going to keep this kid home. They're going to be learning remotely. And if a student does not feel well at school, um, you know, the follow up from our from our school nurse, Mrs. Schiller, um, has really been re remarkable because there have been so many phone calls that sometimes have to be made. Um, and you know, when I, when I think of the, the quote unquote care factor being, you know, something people identify as a positive, uh, people are genuinely trying, teachers, staff, uh, to try and make sure students don't fall too, too far behind, um, knowing that it's sometimes difficult when you're not seeing kids in class every day. Um, for every positive, there are some concerns. Um, the two big ones, and we'll talk a little bit about them, um, the long-term impact, um, thinking of long-term impact of academics and, you know, sort of the, uh, the, the emotional concerns, um, the ones that you see down the bottom about kids being uh, a little bit more uh, depressed or, or just disappointed. You're going to see the students' um, feedback in a minute as well. Uh, the impact um, that we have on our long-term planning, which is that, uh, you know, for underclassmen and uh, those are those are some big big issues. Um, you know, our guidance counselors aren't here tonight, but we're going to talk a little bit about how we're we're working through a lot of those challenges, both in terms of academics and uh, post secondary planning. Because uh, you know, the positives are we we've we've been able to tackle some of those uh, really programmatically, and other things that we're going to be doing uh, some work on over the next few months because. While it seems like we're we're in May or June, the reality is we still got half a school year left. Um, when we think about returning to school, um, which was again that that one of those numbers in the middle um, that the comment got cut off was you know what's it going to look like when we come back? Um, the feedback is very split. There are some people who were very quick to write back, and I, I hear you. Uh, that we want to get back quickly. We, we want our students back in the building. We want them back in the building for full days. For every one of those comments, there was somebody else that said, remote's going really well, don't rush it. Um, you know, make sure people are vaccinated. Make sure you know it's going to be safe. Um, we, we take our orders from those, both some things are within our control and some things are not. Um, the things that are within our control, um, we are actively looking really at, okay, what, what is reasonable for the total number of students? We were able to bring back some students who were struggling at the uh, end of the first quarter. Um, we were able to reach out to some kids who's, who were really struggling, not passing anything and, and struggling with, with remote learning. And Mr. D, I think we had, what, 35, 36 kids who came back at that point. At least that many. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think one of the things that you may hear is, you know, other schools may say, well, we're going to bring back our first grade. We're going to bring back an entire second. It's not that cut and dry to the high school. Um, you know, we, we could think of, well, let's try and bring back all of our seniors. Um, but the second we do that, we have some classes that are mixed, 11th and 12th graders. And we have other classes that um, if we said, well, you know, really, we want to make sure we catch our, our ninth graders who are really struggling. Well, it's, again, not not as cut and dried as, as we would, uh, as we may hope. Um, so we also wanna uh, 
uh, honor that which is going well. Um, where we've kind of settled into a routine with our schedule, uh, the last thing you want to do is blow everything up on a Friday and come back in on a Monday and change everything uh, because high school students are notoriously challenging to get into routines. Um, and you'll see a little bit of that with, with the student data as well. Uh, so yes, we hear all of it. Um, we are working on different scenarios for this year um, and for 21-22. Um, you know, Mr. Demeglio and I meet on this just about every day talking about what, okay, if we had everybody back, what would it look like? If we had everybody back in May and June after the seniors go, what would that look like? If we brought back all of our ninth and 10th graders who have an MCAS to take this year, what would that look like? We're also looking at the reality of, and this came from one of my colleagues, what if we're not back full-time next year? And I know that makes a, a pit in people's stomachs grow. It makes a pit in my stomach grow, but um, we, I, I learned probably, uh, we went out last March 13th. I learned somewhere around March 15th to not uh, make any predictions on uh, what could or could not be happening. From the student standpoint, and as you look at this next set of info from the kids, I want you to pay attention to the red and the blue um, because the red and the blue, oh, uh -oh, sorry. Um, let's go back to the other view. Um, the red and the blue um, is, is positive. And when even, even the yellow to an extent, which is, is neutral, you'll see that the kids are, are really positive for the most part on, um, on how things have gone. And as opposed to the parents who gave us about you know, 75 responses, we got 310 responses from the kids, 309 responses, which is uh, more than half our students. So this is really statistically relevant. Um, the other piece of this that was really helpful for us, the parent survey was anonymous. The kids collected their information. So when we get a survey like this and we have, you know, this is literally five kids that said they disagree and two kids that said they strongly disagree, we were able to bring those kids in, contact them immediately and talk to them about what's not working. So um, if your students were in one of these small subgroups, um, we either are going to talk to them or already have about some of the challenges. Um, and they've been feeling that teacher communication has been positive. Um, they have said that the schedule is fairly manageable. Um, we asked them uh, what they thought of the workload and um, only, you know, like five kids said it was too little. Uh, most of them said it was either just right or, or, or too much. The too much was about 19%. The, uh, the, too, the just right was about 78%. And there were like 3% who said, no, I, it's, it's not, not enough work. Um, they understand for the most part what they need to do each week to be successful. Um, this was an area that we're continuing to work on. It's still positive, but you see the green grows. And that's when people are trying to work um, synchronously between classes that are in person and remotely. And what, what sometimes happens and with the feedback we've gotten from students is that kids log in a couple minutes late and the teacher isn't checking the Zoom, they're too busy already teaching and so the kids don't get in. At the same time, there are kids who are in the class that are telling us it feels like the teachers are spending more time focusing on the kids on the screen um, and they're losing class time. So um, that's something that we're working on. Again, it's, it's imperfect, but again, mostly positive. Um, in terms of support, we're gonna talk again about what kind of support kids are gonna be afforded over these next few months in a, in a minute. But again, people feeling like, students in particular feeling there's enough instruction. Um, and one thing that I'm really proud of is that we've been able to manage their learning of some, some independence, um, almost to a fault. Um, the, the, the way things are, again, are are sometimes asking them to have a, a lot of independent time. Um, but when we talk to some of our folks in higher ed and we talk to some of the folks in the workforce, they're actually really glad that we're doing some of this, uh, particularly because a lot of the classes in college are being run very similar to how we're running things this year here. 
Um, and again, higher ed is not 100% sure on what their schedules will look like next year. Um, so I think it's good that our students who are upperclassmen, juniors and seniors, who are, are getting used to this sort of hybrid model, they could find themselves in that when they're, they're off to school next year. Um, you know, they found the teachers are, are you know, being clear, uh, using class time productively and using technology well. Um, we have said that this is the lowest one, the you, uh, helping prioritize for the week, not something that we're necessarily doing a, a good job of. And that's something we shared with our staff and asked them to maybe make a few minutes of focus um, every, every week um, when, they're, when they're breaking down what has to happen. Um, you know, some of the comments that we've heard, you know, most of them from the students were positive. Um, the second one hit me uh, because it, uh, it was reiterated by, by a few, um, is that kids want things back to normal. Um, I share that with parents because parents want things back to normal. And I will tell you that our staff want things back to normal. I you know Mr. Demeglio and I want things back to whatever normal was for us. Um, and he would tell you that I'm not normal ever. So um, um, Either. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to be a little abnormal to take jobs like this, right, Mr. D? Um, <laughs> so. But you know the kids. The kids' feedback. Um, they said that people are trying to make things as as good as possible. But there were a lot of we miss it. We miss our friends. We miss being with teachers every day. We had a a conversation today with one of the teachers about how much we're growing weary of wearing masks um, and how that act in and of itself has uh, created some sort of separation between us and, and the students. By this time of year, I would know all 600 students by name um, and face. I can't say that I do this year. And uh, that's, that's heartbreaking on a lot of levels. Um, from parents, some people say that the communication has been, has been well, um, done well, that people have been really happy. People are teaching the curriculum, um, but there are also concerns and the concerns, um, sorry, um, a couple of them at the bottom, um, this one in particular, that there's almost too much independent time for some students and that some of the concerns are, are waited until it's too late. And you know, there isn't as much ongoing uh, talk with uh, between parents and students with uh, parents and teachers, I'm sorry. And the biggest concern overwhelmingly has been um, about the, uh, the curriculum itself and how far along we're actually going to get uh, given the amount of time. Um, so when we talk about long-term academics, what we are doing now um, to, to address that, there's, there's a few pieces to this. Um, one is, if, I'm gonna break this first bullet point down into, into each one of those little you know, clauses there in between the, the commas. Within our own school, um, we are working class to class um, from you know, where students were a year ago um, to where students should be in terms of each individual curriculum. So for example, a student is taking geometry or pre-calculus this year. Where are they this year compared to where they would have been last year? Um, I just had this conversation the Thursday before we left for break with our, our eighth grade math team. And they indicated that they are within a couple of days of where they would have been last year in terms of content, you know, unit wise. But the things that they feel like they have glossed over are easily reincorporated into whatever class the kids will take in grade nine, because they're not necessarily as, as uh, intentional with them in grade eight on a typical year. From, um, from there, we're looking at year-to-year -year comparisons. Um, what are the students doing well? What are they not doing well? How does that compare to the past? And how does that inform our future? We're doing the same thing with the Department of Higher Ed. Now, Department of Higher Ed does not play always so well with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed. They used to be in one big umbrella, probably split up uh, sometime in the last 20 years. And um, higher ed, sometimes looks down their nose at uh, elementary and secondary ed and, um, and vice versa. I think there's, there's just not always a lot of cooperation there. 
Um, so we've gone right to the sources. We have gone right to um, admissions counselors. We've gone right to academic departments and we are working on understanding what their expectations are to make sure that we have our students where they need to be uh, by the end of this year if they're seniors and moving forward. Um, having some early college classes here, we try to norm them against what the college is looking for, but we we're, we're want to make sure that, that we're following suit with where that's going to be and the, where that's supposed to be, I'm sorry. And that brings us to College Board. Um, that's not SAT and that's not ACT necessarily because a lot of schools have, have gone the route of making the SAT optional. Um, what that does mean for us, however, is the AP. And we are still running all of our APs. We, uh, for those of you who have students that are taking AP classes this year, uh, the AP classes are gonna have two options. One is a remote option. One's an in-person option. There's a couple of tests that have the paper and pencil option. There are some tests that only have a virtual option. Um, we are right now finalizing that schedule. The one downside to it, and this is the, the college board trying to, I think, please too many masters, is we are going to be able to allow the students to choose whether they're taking the remote test or the in-person test but that also means they're essentially choosing the day they're going to take the test. And some of them are not until early June. Um, so there could be some seniors who are taking their AP test the week of graduation. Um, we do not have any control over that. Um, we have control over the te two testing dates, but we don't have control over you know, universally when those tests are administered. Um, each one of our teachers is working with the college board to uh, make sure that they're following the curriculum adjustments that they have recommended. And again, working with those teachers, they are all feeling like we are pretty prepared. The challenge to uh, that from a technical standpoint for us, well, is that we have to schedule all these AP tests around MCAS and it's looking like grades 10 in English and math and grade nine in science, grade eight in English, math and science are all going to be testing in MCAS this year. And there's a possibility that the grade 11 students are gonna to have to take the, grade, the uh, English and math test as well. So there's gonna be a period of time where we're gonna to have to make sure the kids are all ready for MCAS. Um, and we wanna make sure that, that they're prepared. Again, curriculum wise, those classes, for those of you who have ninth graders who are gonna take physics or 10th graders who are gonna take English and math, um, we feel pretty strongly that, that we're in, in very good shape from a, from a sequence standpoint. Those last two bullets um, are, are big ones because we are right now in the midst of identifying students who've struggled the most. Some of them are coming back into school for more time We've uh, addressed some of that with some outside tutoring. Uh, we've developed a program where some of our teachers and, and support staff are meeting with students outside the school day. Um, and we are also very concerned about the number of kids, the number of kids who are reporting um, feeling very isolated. Um, within the next month, we will be doing some social emotional screening of the students to get a sense of, from them about how they just generally feel. Um, and we've also laid out some opportunities. Uh, we will be laying out some opportunities to get kids back together or to get outside support if they need it. Because the reality is this entire time is starting to wear on a lot of people, uh, students especially. Um, in terms of supports, it's hard for us. I, I know Mr. Demeglio and I, we are challenged to keep track of 600 kids on a daily basis. Um, when we have some that are in person, some that are at home, the ones who are at home, sometimes are supposed to be in person. Sometimes people say, you know what, this week we have to be remote only because there's a quarantine. And then sometime around mid morning, Mrs. Schiller will run in and say, we just found out about something else. This kid's homesick, their father is tested positive and they're not gonna be back. And we've got to try and you know chase our tails a little bit. Um, but we've done our best, I think, at keeping track of 
all of these situations and keeping them in line with where the class would be. But for us to keep track of all 600 kids is sometimes a challenge. We will take the, uh, the numbers and we've crunched them and we've scheduled somewhere between 25 and 35, what are called MTSS meetings here, multi-tiered systems of support. And in those meetings, students, parents, teachers, administrators, counselors, brainstorm supports for the kid. Um, sometimes, yes, it's more time in the building. Sometimes it's just creating a better schedule for at home. Sometimes it's uh, trying something different in terms of how the student organizes their schoolwork. Um, Mr. Demeglio, you, uh, you coordinate almost all those meetings. They're quick, um, but they've been pretty successful, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we try to keep it to maybe 15, 20 minutes and it's, it's, it's all hands on deck. Uh, most of the teachers, you know, give a, a brief synopsis of what's going on with the student. And, uh, you know, we, we develop different, different paths to success. And, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, kids need to hear that I can do this. Uh, you know, you can, you can get across that finish line. And, you know, we give them that path and teachers are very supportive and, uh, you know, they allow, you know, a little bit of late work and uh, we structure it around the student and um, they, ju they just feel more, you know, that, that we're there for them. So we try to do as many of these as we can. And I think they've been very successful. I really do. And um, I, I got to give my hat, uh, tip my hat to the teachers to really uh, put so much time and effort into, you know, getting these reports out to, out to at least the guidance people and myself, and uh, that makes our job a little bit easier. So they've been great, and and the parents have been great too. So we're and, doing our best, I think. And and if you, as a parent, feel like you have concerns, you've reached out to teachers, you've reached out to counselors, but things are not getting better. That's where we really pride ourselves on getting involved. Um, you know, most have indicated that staff is responsive, but there were a couple of of survey answers that you know folks said, "Listen, I." I feel like nothing I've done is, has, has, has been heard. Uh, because the survey is anonymous, I, I mentioned this in my email out over the weekend, we, we, we don't even know where to start. And you know, all we have as a marker on that sometimes is, you know, my child's in the 10th grade and we, we're not sure what the challenge is or, or if it's in a specific class, if there's a pattern, if there's a pattern within that class, uh, those are the sort of challenges that get Mr. Demeglio and I up in the morning, to be honest. We like to solve those problems, but if we don't know the origin of them, um, you know, it's hard for us to address them. I, I will say sometimes people feel like, well, if I bring it up, then my kid will be targeted by the teacher. I, I've been here six years now. This is my sixth year. I've not once had that experience, really. I've, I've had a couple of people that have acted, they, whether it's an actor, whether it, more than, often than not, it's I had no idea, or I'm sorry, or all right, let's, we can't fix yesterday. Let's try and, and figure this out moving forward. Um, so if you feel like there are some of those concerns that haven't been heard, or you've tried to go through the guidance counselor and it got lost in a pile of emails somewhere, I'm not making excuses, uh, we, we will address it. Um, I, I can assure you of that. The other concern that, that came up was, was Wednesday. And, and you know, Wednesday's imperfect. Um, I will say we, we have looked at the possibility of having it be a more structured class day where we bring in one of the cohorts, maybe on an alternating week. Um, I was stopped in the hallway by a kid the, right before break. Um, ironically, Mr. Demeglio was also stopped, I think, the same day that we sent this survey. Um, and it was a couple of students who said, whatever you do, don't change Wednesday. I use that day to get caught up on things. I use that day to, to take a brain break. Um, I understand people saying, I feel like my kid isn't doing anything. Uh, I see it in my own two children, believe me. Uh, they have half days on Wednesday where the half day is not particularly structured. Um, but we have also seen that the students are learning a bit more in terms of their own time management and self-advocacy. And we run an advisory during that day where um, here in the building where we can, we do have the latitude to bring more students back in if kids are struggling. And we have teachers who are using the time, particularly in the afternoon to run small groups and extra help sessions. And um, we have found that that has been positive, but there's no 100% uh, 
for those of you who said this is we're losing class time I, my kids feel like they have nothing to do this is kind of a waste i can't disagree with you if that's how the kids feel i will tell you that we we do believe that the the students would say that well most of us are using the time productively i don't know if that's hyperbole on their part because they like having the day off or if it really is time well spent Either way, the students who have reached out to us with how they've used it, um, it's been fairly beneficial, um, at least by their estimation. Uh, but we are um, trying to target that more, either for class time or um, for, for perhaps something else moving forward. Um, we are also, over the next few day, a few weeks, going to be using um, the Wednesdays for MCAS. Uh, because we can bring in an entire cohort of students. Um, we're also going to be using it for uh, benchmark testing, um, particularly in grades, um, particularly in grades eight and um, grades nine in the next few weeks for English and math. And I'm going to get into in a minute the course selection process. We're also going to be using that on, on, on Wednesdays for the course selection process for next year because we want to make sure that uh, we don't compromise any class time. Mike, uh, you got anything you want to add? Um, maybe once you get into the course selection spot, that's, that's about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, MCAS testing, that's that's coming up. We'll have schedules out. We'll, we'll communicate that out. Um, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, we just found that information out. So, um, yeah, you know, we've been pressing. Last two days. <laughs> yeah, just finally got that stuff. So uh, hang tight. For those of you who have, the one thing that we did learn um, on the MCAS front is even students who are remote are going to be required to come into the building. Um, and there is not going to be a remote MCAS option the way there is for, um, for the College Board. Uh, but we're hoping that we can keep uh, the, the class rosters minimal so that those of you who are concerned about risk know that we'll, uh, we'll minimize that. Um, I mentioned this earlier, as far as having longer periods of time in the school, uh, we are bound by a bargaining agreement as to the number of passing times we can have in a school day. We can't just simply wave a magic wand and go back to the old schedule. Uh, the students did indicate that they, uh, they liked the old schedule, um, but, and we would love to go back to it. We just can't go back to it right now. Um, and we are still trying very hard to make sure that things that are in person and things that are remote stay connected. Um, we're doing that better than a lot of other schools. Uh, in fact, I've had a couple of folks that have reached out to ask us how we've done it as well. I, and I, again, I see it in my own kids who are left entirely on their own for the first four or five months of the school year on their remote days. And um, my kids are much younger than high school age. Um, and it has been, it has not been easy. Um, so I'm really grateful that our teachers have made a commitment to at least having some of the class time every single day, um, you know, with, with some exceptions. I mean, you can't very well teach woodworking remotely. I mean, that we need to pay attention to the machines and make sure people are safe. Um, to get into the course selection process, because I know we're going to have another uh, couple of these in the coming weeks. This is going to look different this year. So I, I, you know, kind of a preview of coming attractions. Um, we're going to have our teachers all recommend the students for the classes that they believe the students should take next year. It's all going to be done virtually. The students will then be given a sheet that has all of their course recommendations listed. Um, so, you know, if they were recommended to take, you know, they're a ninth grader, they were recommended to take, um, you know, Global Two Honors and English 10 College Prep and Pre-Calculus College Prep and uh, Biology Honors that sheet will say that with the teacher's name uh, who made the recommendation and the course. They'll then meet with their counselors to input all of those into the system and to discuss with the counselor any difference. For example, I was recommended for honors, but I really want to take college prep. Um, and also to go through the electives. We are going to have a, a more deliberate, more full-blown presentation on the course selection process. Um, but if you have questions, um, right now, um, we're going to have this really starting in earnest next week. So if you do have questions, this is more geared towards the underclassmen. 
about what things could look like, about what a, an appropriate load for the student could be in terms of classes. Tell, uh, reach out to the school counselor first. If you're concerned about the difference between, you know, hey, what's the difference between, you know, algebra two honors and algebra two college prep in grade nine, reach out to that grade eight math teacher and they'll be able to help you as well. Um, it's a good topic of conversation for parent conferences on Friday, uh, if you have the, the opportunity to, to meet with teachers, but it's always something worth, uh, worth looking at. Uh, you will know your kid, you will know your kid, the whole big picture. Um, most teachers are going to be making that recommendation in the vacuum of their own departments, and they won't necessarily know that your child has been recommended for five different honors or AP level classes and is also going to be doing X, Y, and Z, hopefully outside of school. Um, what we have online, and um, there's, a, there's a link, if you go to the UHS homepage and you click on students and families and then click on academics, there's a whole you know, litany of information there about course selections. The program of studies has not been approved yet. Um, it'll be approved hopefully on Wednesday uh, at the school committee meeting. So what is there right now is considered just a draft. There are a couple of new courses that uh, we're hoping to be able to offer. Um, there are also a couple of what, you know, the, the course selection sheet looks like, but with, without anything obviously pre-filled. Um, again, if you have questions about, about next year and where, where classes could land, you can ask any of us really. Um, one of the things I think that we, we have really been able to pride ourselves on is that we have a really great and robust uh, set of electives. Uh, we have amazing pathways with, uh, with, with connections to industry that are, are really authentic for kids. And as we get back into a more normal schedule next year, we'll give the kids more opportunities for hands-on learning, particularly as they're going up from grades eight to nine and nine to 10 and trying to decide what it is that they wanna do in the long term. Um, the grade eight exploratory hopefully will have informed some of that this year. Um, you know, if a student didn't really like the, uh, the biomed section of that particular class, they probably don't wanna take introduction to uh, principles of biomedical science. Um, that's the purpose of, of doing all this and their counselors will be able to help them help them through that as well. Mr. D, anything on course selection before we, before we move on to the next? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, it will definitely be pretty self-explanatory this year, uh, more so than the past years. So, um, and again, I can't stress more uh, than what you just said, please contact the counselors or the teachers uh, if you have questions, especially use Friday night to do that. Um, that, that would really help. Um, the next thing that, and again, talking about some of the struggles that kids are having, um, we are now focusing on uh, two things. Um, one is something called like an academic boot camp, and thinking of, of you know, if there are students that particularly are seniors that may be struggling to get across the finish line, uh, giving some opportunities on weekends and using April break um, to make sure we get them their, their ability to get a diploma, particularly if the remote learning piece has, has really imp impeded their progress, um, but also looking at summer programs and summer learning opportunity. And this is not traditional summer school per se. I think sometimes people hear summer school and it's, oh, I failed a class, I need to, I need to go back to, to school and make that class up. Some of that will be driven by how students do, but we also wanna focus on kids who have struggled and that includes struggled socially. Uh, kids that are feeling disconnected, kids that are feeling depressed, kids that have their, uh, they're struggling with some so social emotional issues. We wanna try and cast a wide net, get as many students as we need to, to have supported, get them the support that they need. Um, and it may not be, we're not, again, we're in the, in, in the initial planning phase. It realistically might be a few days, um, you know, a, a, a couple of Wednesdays over the course of the summer, or two consecutive Mondays, or, you know, a, a five weeks uh, with one day a week or something to that effect, where we, we have some learning opportunities to get kids uh, connected to the building. Um, we're going to be opening this up as well as part of the transition between grade seven and eight as well, because 
Uh, truthfully, when we look at our, our information, the kids who are struggling the most are our younger students in terms of the academics, not necessarily the seniors. Um, actually, our seniors are doing really well grade-wise. Um, our grade that's struggling the most um, overall tend to be the younger students. Um, and I think part of it is they um, struggle the most with time management. They let the pile grow the greatest and then they choose to, to not do some of the work. So we may be doing some of these, these boot camps, so to speak, on things like time management, on things like advocating for yourself when you've missed the deadline and making sure that you know how to keep an agenda. Uh, not necessarily, hey, this is math camp. Um, we may have some of those opportunities as well, but I think we're looking at, at both. Um, the other question that has come up has been school events. Um, to be honest, I, I walked out of the uh, office today and I kind of looked up at one of the banners we have in the hall. It's, and it's the pep rally. And it's this year's sophomores back when they were in eighth grade at the pep rally. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how we're gonna have that. You know, we, we don't have a way we can do that right now. Pump 750 people into the gym all at once screaming and yelling and, and everything else. Um, we are actively working right now um, on the options for the senior class. And I don't mean to besmirch uh, the younger students who may be wondering, well, we didn't get to have a homecoming dance. We didn't get to have our pep rally. Uh, our focus right now is on the seniors. Uh, there was some information sent about senior plans a few weeks ago. Uh, we haven't updated that yet because our next deadline for seniors is early March. Uh, we're gonna have to make a decision early March on location from the, for the prom. To be fully transparent, um, some of my colleagues have already pulled the plug on it. Um, I am delaying that as long as I can um, in the hope that we'll be able to do something. Um, and that is the plan is to do something, even if it's something outdoors and here at the school um, and not involving a meal, we will do something. Um, honestly, um, I took the same approach with respect to the winter sports season and it worked out really well for Uxbridge. We, we waited, we waited, we waited, waited, and we said, if we can do this safely, we're going to do something. And that's gonna be the plan for, for prom and any of our other senior events. Um, we have started plans for graduation. Uh, I've been working actively with the class officers and the, uh, the advisor on trying to get some different scenarios in the works. Honestly, the weather has been a little bit challenging because we want to try and do something outdoors. And until last week, our turf was covered with snow. So I wasn't able to get out there and measure to the extent that I would have liked. Um, and we even met today because we're looking at some different opportunities to pull the class together. For example, in late March, our state rep is um, hosting a service event where they're going to be distributing meals for families for, for the Easter holiday and they needed a group of students to be able to help coordinate that for distribution here in Uxbridge, we're gonna make that a senior class event. Um, trying to do things where on perhaps on the Wednesdays after everybody leaves, we get the seniors to come in and do something here on the afternoons, even if we have like an outdoor cookout or, or something uh, of that regard outside the building um, when the weather gets better. So we are gonna try and plan some things over the next six to eight weeks um, that will hopefully provide some clarity uh, for parents of seniors in particular. Uh, the one thing that you know I, I've shared is that I don't know that there's a way we can have a junior senior prom, but we will, after we tackle the uh, challenges of whatever we have to do with the seniors, we will uh, do what we can for the other classes. One thing that we're pushing the governor's office on as this is as school leaders, is right now, if graduation were to be held next week, we'd be in really difficult shape because we're still limited by the number of people we can have even in an outdoor gathering. So we are hoping that um, the numbers continue to decline and our opportunities will, will expand. Uh, so, you know, this is why we're, we're, we're really hoping that the vaccination rollout improves and uh, people will keep wearing masks and doing what, they're, what they, they have to do to be vigilant. Um, in terms of interscholastic athletics, I just mentioned that we were one of only four Swickle schools that held a winter season. Um, and even some of the schools around us 
that aren't in our league had to, you know, they started, they stopped, they had delays, they had cancellations. Um, we ran our entire schedule. Um, uh, credit to Mr. Carboni and Ms. Chella, our trainer and the coaches, and most importantly, the student athletes and their families, uh, because there are sacrifices that had to be made for us to have our, our schedules work, work well. We had a very successful fall season. Um, I think we had one or two fairly minor hiccups, but I talked to colleagues of mine and they tell me, oh yeah, we lost our, our entire cross country season. We, we didn't have a problem like that. Um, and we opened fall two today. Uh, football started today. We'll have cheer starting ideally next week and winter track um, either next week or the week after. By that point, winter track will be more of a spring track and will hopefully be, be outdoors. Um, and we're gonna have a spring schedule. Um, you know, the spring schedule will begin sometime in April and we'll be able to continue it through all the way till the end of June. So um, that does mean that some of the seniors will, who play sports like baseball or tennis could, you know, outdoor track will, and softball, will see that their, their schedules may extend long beyond their graduation days. Uh, but we're going to be able to give them a season. Uh, so now what? Um, if you have questions and you've been able to type them into the chat, we'll come back to them. But if you have something specific, um, reach out to me, reach out to school counselor, uh, you know, Mr. Demeglio, really anybody. Um, if it's really specifically related to your student or a specific staff member or a situation where we can help, um, you know, we, we are trying our best. Uh, some of this may be like, well, we didn't learn anything really new um, for tonight. Um, hopefully it gave you some context to we're, we're, we're still refining things. We're not making sure that, you know, we're not sitting here and saying, well, we, we did everything for, for the first half of the year and now we're in the second semester and we're just gonna let it ride. No, we're gonna keep making improvements and, and doing things better as, as we need to. Um, and, if there are situations that are not getting better um, or you have kids who are really struggling with, with some element of this mess or another, uh, we're here to help. Um, I think that, that hopefully is, is part, of the, part of the message, whether it's academic or otherwise, we're here to help. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in the chat, Mr. Demeglio, and if there are, we can come to them. Um, and- no. There are none. Run on at this point. Well, that that's just impossible. I, I <laughs> so you need one of my kids here. They'd have questions. <laughs> they would have questions. My wife would have questions. That's for sure. Uh, she would absolutely have questions for me. They might not have anything to do with this, but she'd have questions. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, well, a couple of comments just thanking us. Well, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you know, this has been a lot of work. Um, we, uh, we walked out last March 13th and, um, actually maybe I will touch on that. Um, we think there will be some kids who are going to struggle with the anniversary of going remote. <laughs> some kids uh, have not done well, uh, and really struggled last spring. So that's another thing that we're kind of keeping an eye on. Um, this has been a challenge. Um, it's been a it's been laborious, and we are just going to try and do our best to to move things forward and uh, you know do what we can and make sure that you know come you know the next one of these we have more solutions and things are even more positive. And when we get to the summer and we're talking about uh, 21, 22, uh, hopefully everybody's had a everybody that's wanted one has had a needle in their arm and we've gotten to some better point of, of immunity without, without too many, too many more challenges. Mr. D, anything you want to add before we wrap things up? Um, no, just don't be afraid to contact us. If we have a, if you have a question, if you, if you get a concern with the student, please contact us. Um, and we'll, we'll get right on it and get you the answers that you need. Um, so, you know, we, we, we enjoy the calls. Don't think that we don't. Um, I did just get a, uh, I just got a, um, a note that if you did not get the parent survey, um, and this is to those who might be watching this as a recording, and those who are <clears> watching this, um, if you send me an email, I will send that to you directly. Um, most of the time, um, 
you know, what I do with I when I click through is I, I click all the high school grades, I have to send it by by grade. Um, and I know I, I I know it went to all grades because I've got, you know, the, the data was was from all four or five grades. Um, but if you didn't want to, if you didn't get it and you still want to answer it, shoot me a note and I'll I'll be sure to incorporate that into the data. Um, every now and then the gremlins get into the uh, the email system, but we we yeah, it, it's it's entirely possible that it got batched out and and some folks didn't get it. Um, so thank you uh, for bringing that up. And um, with that, I think we'll I'll hit stop record. Thank everybody for joining us. Be safe. Uh, have a great night and thank you for, for all your support and help uh, in making this year as, as successful as we can. Thanks a lot and uh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Good night, everybody.